Our Prophet ﷺ called this group the worst of the creation, even though right before he said, they recite the Qur'an. So these are not non-Muslims he's talking about. These are people who believe in the Qur'an and recite the Qur'an. And in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, they call to the Book of Allah, but they have nothing to do with the Book of Allah. They call to the Sharia, but they have nothing to do with the Sharia. Pay attention to the words of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is predicting a group that is calling to the Book of Allah, to the Sharia. But he himself said they have nothing to do with the Sharia. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who fight them are closer to the Book of Allah than they are. Meaning those who oppose these groups, they have more to do with the Sharia than this group. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted in the hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad that this group will continue to rise forth until the Day of Judgment. So it is true that classical Kharijism, this group that came in the time of Ali, that group by and large dwindled away. But others of that fanaticism will continue to rise until the day of judgment. And this is exactly what we see, my dear brothers and sisters, in light of the current circumstance. Hundreds and thousands of those who oppose these groups, Sunni and Shia, Muslim and non-Muslim, men, women and children, they have all been butchered by these people who are claiming to want the Sharia, claiming to want the Khilafah, claiming to want the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet exactly as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, their speech is flowery, but their actions have nothing to do with me. Exactly as our Prophet sallallahu said, their actions demonstrate they leave this religion like an arrow leaves its prey. Just like the Kharijites of old, anybody who opposes them, automatically he becomes a kafir. You cannot have disagreement with these people. And wallahi, I and every single da'i and caller to Islam who has criticized them, look at our Twitter accounts that respond back to us and Facebook comments from the supporters of this group. You kafir, you sell out, you American dog, you this, you that. There can be no disagreement. Instantly, you become a non-Muslim. And I have gotten death threats myself, and I know others who have criticized them have gotten death threats online from these fanatics. Subhanallah, we are only saying don't kill innocent people even if you disagree with this does that mean you're going to now call us kafir and munafiq but this is the mentality of kharijites that there is it's black and white the world you're either with us or you're against us and this is not the mentality of a muslim with a different opinion ya akhi, our religion has differences of opinion in it suppose i disagree with one act doesn't make me a non-muslim why can't we find any learned Islamic scholars or Imams in the Islamic world who endorse ISIS? Al-Azhar University, I mean, the most prestigious seat of learning in Sunni Islam, uh, says ISIS follows a false Islam, the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia. He says ISIS uh, is the number one enemy of Islam. And the problem here is they call themselves Islamic. They tell Western journalists, we're very serious about our faith. Uh, and we kind of believe them and start doing their PR for them, which I think is a mistake. Islam is already under the pump. Uh, media spreading a very, 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 very dangerous lee wave of Islamophobia. It's, it's abundant, it's around us, vilification of Islam and anything Islamic, even halal food, they're trying to criticize and attack now. So, uh, of course, people that hate this religion, people that are against this religion, any enemy of this religion, you're, you're adding fuel to the fire that already exists. Of course, uh, it, it's a negative image, it's something that we completely distance ourselves from uh, uh, and uh, it has really has nothing to do with the 1.7 billion Muslims around the world. We, we cannot even say that these people are a minority, they are less than a minority. The numbers compared to the total population of the Muslim world is completely insignificant but unfortunately because of the media attention they are getting and the propaganda that they are doing now and causing uh, people are assuming that this is Islam and this is our beautiful religion when it's completely the opposite. You're not allowed to kill people in the name of Allah, in the name of the Sharia, ah, in this brutal manner. Innocent people. How many thousands have been killed, my dear brothers and sisters? And wallahi, we need to be as vocal as possible for the sake of our religion, for the sake of the perception, not just amongst non-Muslims, wallahi, even non-practicing Muslims. And this is perhaps the saddest thing, that there are many amongst us who think, I don't want to become too religious. I don't want to become like those people. Subhanallah. My dear brothers and sisters, what these people are doing is not religion. Religion 
religiosity, Islam, Iman, the more you have, the better it is for you. Do not misunderstand false religiosity with genuine religiosity. Religion will never harm you. Quran is never going to hurt you. Following the Prophet is always beneficial. These people do not represent our religion. Our Prophet was the most religious man. And yet he was a mercy to the world. He was the most religious man. And yet he was a mercy to the world. Religion is nothing but good if it is done properly. There are people in the world of Islam who do act in a manner that is against Islam, which you can label as terrorism, no doubt in my mind, I know it, you know it. There's no point in denying it. But it is not fair to judge Islam per the actions of some Muslims, otherwise all Christians are crusaders. But they're not.